In this video, let's have a look at the relationship between heteroscedasticity and omitted variable bias. And the keywords here is omitted variable bias. Recall in the previous two or three videos, we also discussed about omitted variable, but there was no bias because there was no relationship between the omitted variable, there was no correlation between the omitted variable and the independent variable. Now, in this case, we're gonna work through an example, a practical one that's gonna make sense. We actually have an omitted variable that is correlated with the independent variable, so we do suffer from a bias. Now, what we notice is again a case of heteroscedasticity. Why is that? Because the constant, sorry, the variation of the error term around the regression line is not constant. Over here, over here, it is slightly low and beyond it, it's becoming higher. Now, what is the regression line that we're dealing with? We have the relationship between the test score of an individual and the school funding in that specific school of that individual. So, What's the idea? School funding, how much money they have, right? The schools, let's say they're private schools, they're run by uh, the parents and the board, so they invest in their schools to, to be able to give better facilities for the kids. With better facilities, they can study better, they can have higher scores. But the question is, why is that not a trend? Why do we have that even though the school funding goes up, so let's say over here the school funding would be, for instance, $3,000 per month, so in that specific uh, school, in that specific yeah, in that specific school, I wanted to say market, uh, we move we move to the right when the school funding is increasing, let's say it's becoming $7,000 per month. Now with $7,000 per month, we would think that we have really good facilities, so we should have high test scores, but notice that we still can have low test scores. So over here, the test scores range, let's say from zero to 10, let's make it the standard system, so from zero to 10, and even though when we have a lot of funding in the school, we still have cases where the test score of that individual can be a 2, can be a 3, can be a 4 and so on. Now, re recall this, of course we have variables that affect the test score that do not depend on the funding. That's the talent of the student, that's his own work ethic, the family background and so on. But we are having actually a variable that we're not included in the model because the, the school funding affects how the school is going to manage the funds, how they're going to manage the money. So what they can still do with a lot of money is they can make smaller classes. And with smaller classes, the teacher can give more attention per student. So that student is going to have better test scores. So one variable that we're probably missing is the school si uh, the class size. Let's call it CS. Now, what happens is that there is a correlation between the school funding and the class size. Mainly, the more funding we have, the more classes we can arrange, the smaller we can make them because more, smaller classes means more classes and more classes means more teacher, that means more investments in the schools. So with more money, we can do so. That's a positive correlation. The more funding we have, the more classes we can make in the school, the more attention to the student, the more results to the student. And we know, we just discussed that the class size affects the test score of the individual due to the enga engagement of the teacher with the student. So that is, that is the criteria of the omitted variable bias. Recall, we must have the correlation between the independent variable and the omitted variable. This is the omitted variable in this case and the omitted variable must affect the outcome variable. So that's what's happening over here, meaning that this heteroscedasticity is showing us that we are suffering or we might suffer from omitted variable bias. And the way to test this is to come up with an intuition. So a, th a hypothesis, what can be, we what can we omit? Well, we are probably omitting the class size. We are running the regression. If the class size turns out to have a significant effect, so that is significant, and this one is becoming lower, it means we did suffer from a positive omitted variable, positive, um, omitted variable bias. This coefficient was inflated because partly the effect that we were showing from the uh, school funding on the test score was also explaining the effect of the class size. And when we control from that, this slope coefficient is deflated. That's what we are expecting to have. Anyway, I just wanted to show this to make the difference that we still can have heteroscedasticity and omitted variable bias. And in the previous videos, we showed that it could be heteroscedasticity with an omitted variable, but no bias because we were missing this correlation between the omitted variable and the independent term. Hope this makes sense and we're done.